What is going on YouTube? So coming back with my South Carolina football preview for 2016. Earlier today I did BYU and later today I'll be coming back to Notre Dame. But I'll talk about what I'm getting at right now. So recap the format I'll be doing. So three key players, two X factors, and then my track game, biggest game, and record prediction for South Carolina. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a team that has undergone a lot of changes heading into 2016. I say that about a lot of teams, but South Carolina loses their longtime head coach. They lose their best wide receiver in Farrow Cooper, and they also lose maybe who would have been their potential starting quarterback in Connor Mitch. And they bring in Will Moss Champ, which we'll see how that ends up working out. So go ahead and start with my first of the three key players. And first one, I have Brandon McIlwain. So the guy actually has a lot of makings of maybe a sleeper quarterback heading into 2016. If you haven't heard the name, then go watch him in the spring game. He was actually pretty impressive. Looks like he could be a solid dual threat quarterback for years to come. We'll be coming in as, as I believe, a true freshman. And I think he could actually be one of the better quarterbacks in the SEC uh, by the start of the 2017 season. I think a lot of how South Carolina does on offense will start and end with him. This is a South Carolina team that struggled mightily finding a starting starting quarterback last year. Perry Orth pretty much ended up becoming the guy. Now, with Brandon McIlwain starting, I, I'm assuming it will be him. Perry Orth is still in the running, but I don't think he will have a very long leash. He will need to be able to have, be a solid passing quarterback as well as South Carolina wants to be or wants to put together a uh, like a bowl season. <coughs> Excuse me. So my second key player is Debo Samuel. I think it's important that he takes kind of takes the torch from Farrah Cooper as the best wide receiver and just the best overall player on, along the offense for South Carolina. They're going to need that number one target to be able to, you know, give a freshman quarterback something that he can just dump the ball off to be able to say, you know, if I give you a 50-50 ball or, you know, if I overthrow you a little bit, you'll be able to catch up to it or just bring down the pass really no matter what. Now, Debo Samuel, while he's not the best wide receiver in the country by any means, I think he has the makings to be one of the best wide receivers in the SEC. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a team that does have a few other we or weapons um, in the receiving core. I believe Brian Edwards will be a solid option as a true freshman, and then Jamari Smith returns for his junior year. So they do have multiple options at the res or in the receiving core. So my third key player is Chaz Elder. It would have been Sky more if he had actually been able to stay healthy, but he will be out for the year. And I think that'll leave the leadership along the defense up to Chaz Elder at safety. This is a very experienced uh, set of safeties that South Carolina has this year. Between Chaz Elder, Jordan Diggs, and even the backups in uh, Jasper, I believe Jasper Sasser, and then uh, Torrey Boyd. I, no one's younger than a redshirt junior, and... Um, it'll have to be the focal point of their defense, in my opinion. Uh, the corners, uh, Chris Lamons comes back for, um, I believe, his second second consecutive year of starting at corner, but Rashad Fenton uh, will be a brand-new corner to break in. Basically, that leaves Chaz Elder as, in my opinion, the heart and soul of the defense. Um, they do have a lot of experience in the linebacking core and still along the defensive line. So... As long as they can find that leadership and he can be that guy, then I think the defense will at least still be respectable this year. So moving my two X factors, and the first one I kind of mentioned earlier, and that is to find leadership. This goes for both sides of the ball. It seems like it was something that was kind of lacking last year, and uh, one of the reasons why they fell to, a, or why South Carolina fell to a three and nine record at the end of the season. You know, you're bringing in a true freshman at quarterback, and you lose who was supposed to be your heart and soul and leader along the defense in Sky Moore, probably who was going to be projected to be a first round pick. Now, I think there are guys that can step up. I just mentioned Chaz Elder. I think Debo Samuel has the ability to step up as a leader on offense. And then David Williams as a starting running back probably could do the same thing. It's just a matter of actually doing it. So my second X factor is an effect or is an effective or efficient passing game something that was definitely missing from South Carolina last year. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's not all just on the quarterback. 
That's on the receivers. I think the tight end's going to have to be better. Hayden Hurst will most likely be a starter this year. Going to need a big year from him. If Brandon McIlwain can actually prove to be one of the best dual threat quarterbacks, not just in the SEC, but in the country, that's a lot of pressure to put on a true freshman, though. Then South Carolina should be able to get back to at least a 6-6 six and six record, if not better than that. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm not feeling very good today. But anyway, guys, uh, move into my trap game, and I think it will be Kentucky. A uh, team that has given South Carolina some problems over the last couple years. Uh, it is their fourth game and their fourth game of the season and third road game. Uh, second SEC's game as well. So it comes at a pretty trying time. Their first four games, none of which are extremely tough, but none of which are pushovers either, especially for a South Carolina team that's coming off a three win season. It is sandwiched in between East Carolina and Texas A&M at home. So playing at Kentucky, I don't think it's going to be a pushover. I think they should be favored in the game. Uh, this is a Kentucky team that uh, finished off 2015. I believe it was four straight losses. So uh, being able to get a win over Kentucky will be big if South Carolina wants to be able to make a bowl game for this year. And now my biggest game for them is a similar situation against Mizzou. I do think that's their biggest um, game in conference. Obviously, if you're talking about hardest team they're playing and that's probably either between Georgia, Florida, or Tennessee. But when you're talking about a South Carolina team that's probably going to be battling for that fourth place in the SEC East and hopefully a uh, bold bid, then they're going to have to beat what is probably the fourth best team in the SEC East right now, and that is Mizzou. You can make an argument for Mizzou or Kentucky, but my personal opinion is Mizzou. So my record prediction for South Carolina, I think they will go 6-7 and seven this year. I think they'll end up making a bowl game, but losing it. Uh, I, if you watched my BYU preview before this, a very similar uh, turnout to that prediction that I had both teams at 6-7. and seven. But That pretty much does it for this video. Uh, we'll be coming back later today with my Notre Dame preview, so that one should be interesting uh, as well. So that's pretty much it. See ya.